Hi guys, it's Kat. Today, I have a much bigger project to show you. I'm often asked how I learn the techniques to build my miniatures, and many times, it's through working on the real thing. Today, I'll show you how I reupholster this old pink wingback chair with a beautiful gray high-performance fabric. Don't worry, I'll have a list of all the supplies I use at the end of this video and in the description box below. Let's get started. What the manufacturer added last, you want to remove first. Take off the seat cushion. We'll save that for the end. The first thing I do is remove the dust cover on the bottom of the chair. Remove the cardboard strips first and then remove the metal tacks. I'm using this tack remover as some pliers for this step. The piping around the edges come off too. Now remove all the tacks that hold these bottom pieces of fabric in place. The first piece of fabric that comes off is the chair's back. Use a tack remover to pry the fabric away from the chair. The top of the fabric is folded inside this metal piece called the curved ease. Slowly pull it out. This whole back piece can now be taken off. Then remove the batting. Remove the tacks that hold the curved ease in place. Then off goes the piping. I like to make a list of each piece I remove in proper order so I know how to add on the new fabric later. I won't remove this entire plastic cover, but I'm removing a few tacks just to get it out of the way. Then you can tape it together in the center and remove the tacks on the sides. Then slowly start releasing the side fabric on the curved ease. When you get to the horizontal section under the armrest, it's just another cardboard strip with staples. The front of that is a small section of curved ease. Do this on the other side of the chair as well. Remove the tacks that are holding the piping in place. The next big piece of fabric we'll remove is the chair seat back. Pull out all the staples from the top back area and pull the whole piece forward and down. The bottom of it is tucked through the crevice and stapled to the back, so let's take care of that. Pull the whole panel out. Next comes off the inside of the wings. These pieces are stapled all along the outer side of the wings. It's also stapled in with the cardboard on the inside right behind the armrest. Now you can remove all the staples along the outer edge of the armrest. The bottom of the armrest fabric is stapled to the bottom of the chair side. To get to those tasks, move this plastic cover out of the way. With those staples removed, the fabric can be pulled through the side crevice. On the top of the armrest, remove the staples from the foam and pull it backward. Remove the tacks from the fabric. As you can see, the armrest fabric comes off first, then the piping, then that peanut shape fabric on the armrest front. The last piece that needs to be removed is the seat bottom. It's attached with all these staples on the sides and back. You also need to remove the tacks around the legs. Then pull this whole section off. I marked the seams with a marker to help me sew the same shape on a new fabric. 
Rip the seams to separate the pink fabric from the cream lining. We'll save the cream lining to reuse. Now rip the seams to flatten out the pink fabric. Mark a center line halfway down the middle of the shape. I trace and cut out the shape on the new gray fabric. Sew up the angle edges into the same shape as the pink fabric. Do this on both sides. Sew the gray fabric to the cream lining. Let's get to the fun part of putting some new fabric on this chair. Place the seat bottom back into position. Push, pull, and staple all the fabric into place. Next up are the armrest fronts. Cut out two peanut shapes that match the ones we removed. I just traced the pink pieces using them as a pattern. Position on the armrest front and staple all along the sides. Do this for the other armrest. Now we need to add some piping around this area. We'll reuse the piping we took off the chair. Remove the white cord from inside the pink fabric. Cut some lengths of fabric that are 2 inches wide. If your fabric isn't long enough, sew some lengths together with right sides facing each other. Wrap the core in the middle of the fabric and sew it in place. I like to use a zipper foot on my sewing machine for this part. Cut a piece of fabric in the same shape as the armrest pattern and sew some piping along the bottom of it. Then simply drip it over the armrest with the piping closest to the front edge. Flip the fabric over and staple around the top edge. Flip the fabric back over. Add staples on the outside armrest and the inner fabric through the seat crevice. I'm basically doing the reverse of what I did when removing the pink fabric. For the inside wings, first move the back seat cushion and the batting out of the way. Then attach the inner wing piece with the piping at the bottom. Again, I just made a copy of the pink fabric I removed. Flip it downward and staple it at the top of the armrest. Add a strip of cardboard for sturdiness. Pull the fabric back up and staple it around the outer sides. Do the same for the other inner wing. To keep the fabric smooth and prevent any buckling, I cut some slits along the sides. It makes wrapping the fabric around the curves so much smoother. Then you can flip the back seat cushion back into place and add a batting on top. Cut a piece of gray fabric the same size and shape as the pink piece we took off and add it on top. Slide the sides and bottom through the crevices and pull the fabric through the back. For the top of the chair, I cut slits to prevent buckling and staple the fabric down. Let's get the sides covered up. First, add some piping along the top and front edge. It helps to cut slits so the piping sits flatter. Once the piping is secure, it's time to put the curve ease back on. I removed the metal from the original fabric and straightened it out with pliers. Go slow here so you don't accidentally hurt yourself. We'll be stapling the side with the hole to the chair and attaching the fabric to the side with the little teeth. Cut out a piece of gray fabric the same size and shape as the side piece we removed. Add the fabric inside the curved ease and fold the metal teeth over. I use a rubber mallet to hammer the metal together without damaging the fabric. Add a smaller curve ease along the side of the fabric. If the fabric is too long, mark where the curve ease starts and trim off the excess. 
fold the fabric in and close the curved ease up. For the straight edge, fold the fabric over to see how much you need to fold inward. Then we use the post through tack strip and push it through the fabric. The nail heads in the tack strip will get hammered straight into the chair. Pull the remaining fabric downward and staple it to the bottom of the chair. We're almost done guys. Onto the back of the chair. Remove the tape from the plastic cover and staple it back in place. Add piping to the top and sides. Then staple the curved ease back on top. Staple the batting back on. Lastly, add on the big fabric panel. Tuck the top into the curved ease and hammer it in securely. For the sides, we'll be reusing these long upholstery tack strips. Fold the fabric along the sides and mark the corners with chalk. Then push the tack strip through the bottom of the fabric along that line and hammer it into the chair. For the bottom, cut around the legs and fold the excess fabric inward above the legs. The rest of the fabric is pulled taut and stapled downward into place. Add piping along the bottom edges. The piping is a bit too thick around the legs, so I add clips where the piping will wrap around the leg and cut off the extra fabric. Wrap it around and staple it in place. Finally, add a dust cover back on. The last and final step is to recover this cushion. I simply remove the cover, trace all the pieces, and made an identical copy. This step is pretty simple if you used a sewing machine before. I won't go into too much detail here because cushions are pretty self-explanatory compared to the rest of the chair. Add the original sticker back onto the seat base and place the cushion back on. That's it guys, we're all done. This wing back chair is fully reupholstered and looks way better than it did in the beginning. This project took me about two full weeks to complete. I hope you like this video and if you try it out, please send me a picture. It's wonderful when we're able to repair and even improve something instead of throwing it out and buying something new. In my next video, I'll show you how I use the techniques I learned in this project to make a miniature chair. I'll see you next time. Bye.